Hello students, uh, in today's video we will discuss pharmacology of uh, diuretic that uh, inhibits carbonic anhydrase enzyme uh, that is acetazolamide. Now carbonic anhydrase is an enzyme present in renal tubular cell especially uh, proximal convoluted tubule, gastric mucosa, exocrine pancreas, ciliary body of eye, brain and RBCs. Now, before discussing pharmacology of uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, let's uh, quickly revise function of kidneys and uh, the role of diuretics. Now, uh, look at this diagram. Uh, this diagram shows a uh, structure of nephron and uh, these are the uh, peritubular capillaries and these peritubular capillaries are also termed as vasa recta. Now the most important function of kidneys is to filter and purify blood and remove waste toxic products of the body in the form of urine. Now structural and functional unit of kidney is the nephron. Now each kidney consists of around 1 million nef nephrons and the main function of kidney is to produce urine. Now there are three main steps in the formation of urine namely the glomerular filtration then selective reabsorption and secretion. Now blood in the glomerulus is filtered and the filtrate passes into the tubule of nephron. Now around 180 liters of filtrate is produced daily by both the kidneys. Now this filtrate uh, consists of more than 90% water. Uh, then waste toxic products like urea, uric acid, creatinine along with the useful substances like glucose, amino acids, uh, vitamins, electrolytes like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium etc. Now all these essential substances uh, that are required along with the water is reabsorbed. Uh, it is reabsorbed from the uh, lumen into the luminal epithelial cells and from the luminal epithelial cells all the required substances they move to the peritubular capillaries or vasa recta and thus all these required substances they reach the blood circulation. Now thus around 99% of the filtrate uh, is returned to the blood circulation and this reabsorption of filtrate maintains the blood volume and uh, the pH of blood. Now reabsorption of water primarily depends on the reabsorption of sodium. Now water is reabsorbed isoosmotically that is for every molecule of sodium that is reabsorbed is accompanied by reabsorption of molecule of water and thus when the sodium is reabsorbed uh, the water follows. Uh, that means water follows higher sodium concentration. Now very important to remember that uh, out of 180 liter of filtrate only 1 to 1.5 liter of urine is produced. That means uh, rest uh, of the filtrate that is 99% of the filtrate is reabsorbed um, in this uh, renal tubule. At uh, different sites like uh, the proximal convoluted tubule here uh, 65 to 70% of sodium and water is uh, uh, reabsorbed. Uh, then this is the descending loop of Henle here 15 percent of uh, water is reabsorbed. Uh, this is the ascending limb of uh, loop of Henle here around 25 percent of uh, sodium is reabsorbed. Now this is the early distal tubule here uh, around 5 percent of sodium and 8 percent of uh, uh, the content uh, water content of the filtrate is uh, reabsorbed. Uh, now this is the late uh, distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct here around 3 percent of uh, uh, sodium is absorbed and apart from this water is also absorbed. Now absorption of uh, water is tightly regulated by antidiuretic hormone in the collecting duct whereas absorption reabsorption of sodium is regulated by the aldosterone. So this is how Mm, at different sites uh, water and uh, sodium is reabsorbed from the renal tubule into the renal uh, into the luminal epithelial cells and from the luminal epithelial cells sodium along with the water moves into the peritubular capillaries or vasa recta and from here uh, sodium as well as water they reach the blood circulation and this is how the blood volume 
and the pH of blood is maintained. Now, uh, diuretics are the agents that uh, act upon kidney uh, and they increase the volume of urine, thereby reducing the volume of blood. Now, uh, what di uh, diuretics uh, do is this, that di diuretics decrease uh, the reabsorption of uh, sodium as well as the reabsorption of water from the lumen into the peritubular capillaries. Thus, diuretics are the agents that uh, cause net loss of sodium and water in the urine. Now since these diuretics they increase the volume of urine, they reduce the volume of blood, they are primarily useful in the management of edema and hypertension. Uh, so now let's talk about uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor that is uh, acetazolamide. Acetazolamide is a sulfonamide derivative. It uh, non-competitively but uh, reversibly inhibits carbonic anhydrase and uh, produces diuretic effect. It causes a net loss of sodium and water in urine. It is a weak diuretic and it's uh, therefore also used as adjuvant or additional diuretic. Uh, it's well absorbed orally and excreted unchanged in urine. Action of a single dose of 250 milligrams lasts for about 8 to 12 hours. Uh, now let's uh, discuss mechanism of action of uh, acetazolamide. Its site of action is the proximal convoluted tubule. Look at this diagram. Uh, this shows the lumen where the filtrate is present. This is the luminal epithelial cell of proximal convoluted tubule. And this is a section of peritubular capillaries or vasa recta showing the blood. Now this epithelial cell has two surfaces. One is the apical surface. Uh, that uh, is towards the lumen. Other is the basolateral surface which is towards the peritubular capillaries. Now very important, this is a transporter. Uh, this is a sodium hydrogen antiporter. Now this sodium hydrogen antiporter mediates reabsorption of sodium in exchange with the hydrogen ion. So sodium is reabsorbed in the epithelial cell and from there it moves to the blood it moves into the peritubular capillaries and hydrogen ion is uh, secreted in the filtrate this is normally what happens now acetazolamide uh, non-competitively and reversibly inhibits carbonic anhydrase 2 in the epithelial cell now inhibition of carbonic anhydrase 2 prevents hydration of carbon dioxide and since there is reduced hydration of carbon dioxide, this reduces the synthesis of carbonic acid and this reduces availability of hydrogen ion to exchange with the sodium. And the sodium is not reabsorbed, sodium remains within the filtrate and since reabsorption of sodium is, is uh, prevented or inhibited, uh, reabsorption of water is also reduced. Now, apart from this, uh, when sodium is reabsorbed in exchange of the hydrogen ions, hydrogen ion is secreted in the filtrate and normally this hydrogen ion combines with the, uh, with the luminal bicarbonate ion that is uh, bicarbonate which is present in the filtrate to form carbonic acid. Now, acetazolamide inhibits carbonic anhydrase 4 also in the lumen thereby preventing dissociation of carbonic acid to carbon dioxide and water and therefore there is reduced generation of carb carbon dioxide and re reduced diffusion of carbon dioxide into the epithelial cell. This further reduces the availability of uh, hydrogen ion for exchange with the sodium. So this is how by inhibiting the enzyme carbonic anhydrase acetazolamide inhibits reabsorption of sodium, inhibits secretion of uh, hydrogen ion. So, sodium remains within the filtrate and uh, it is not reabsorbed. Uh, this is how it uh, exhibits its uh, diuretic effect. Now, apart from uh, this, when acetazolamide is, is used, uh, there is a reduced availability of uh, hydrogen ion. So, luminal bi bicarbonates, uh, they are excreted uh, since because of the reduced availability of uh, hydrogen ions, luminal bicarbonate is, is, is excreted and this makes the urine alkaline and further it can cause metabolic acidosis. So, these uh, uh, 
uh, diuretic that is acetazolamide it can cause uh, it can make the urine alkaline now apart from inhibiting carbonic anhydrase in the proximal convoluted tubule acetazolamide also inhibits carbonic anhydrase in the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct which interferes with the generation of hydrogen ions at these two sites now as we have already discussed acetazolamide inhibits reabsorption of sodium in the proximal convoluted tubule so sodium is lost in the filtrate now when this filtrate reaches the distal convoluted tubule and proximal duct the lost sodium is 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 reabsorbed in exchange with potassium so potassium is secreted in the lumen or potassium is secreted in the urine so this causes loss of potassium in the urine and leads to marked caliuresis that is presence of excessive potassium in the urine now very important uh, use of acetazolamide causes continuous loss of bicarbonate in the urine now this continuous loss of bicarbonate depletes the body's body stores and as already discussed this can cause metabolic acidosis now metabolic acidosis means availability of hydrogen ions for exchange with the sodium so now hydrogen ions are available they can be exchanged with the sodium so thus the diuretic effect of acetazolamide stops so therefore acetazolamide exhibits self limiting diuretic action and therefore acetazolamide is not preferred as a diuretic uh, now let's uh, discuss extra renal actions of acetazolamide now aqueous humor of the eye is rich in bicarbonate ions now acetazolamide causes loss of bicarbonates in the urine so uh, this leads to reduced synthesis of aqueous humor reduces intraocular pressure and thus acetazolamide is used as an adjuvant or as an add on therapy in the treatment of glaucoma now raised levels of carbon dioxide in the brain and lowering of ph causes sedation and elevation of seizure threshold and thus acetazolamide is used as an adjuvant in epilepsy also now uses of acetazolamide as a diuretic uh, as we have already discussed acetazolamide is not preferred as a diuretic as it causes marked uh, caliuresis metabolic acidosis and exhibits self limiting diuretic action now other uses of acetazolamide as discussed earlier it is used as an uh, adjuvant in glaucoma and uh, again as we have discussed uh, that it makes a urine alkaline and therefore it is useful in excreting certain acidic drugs again it is useful in uh, uh, in epilepsy in the management of epilepsy as an adjuvant now acetazolamide is also useful in acute mountain sickness acetazolamide provides symptomatic relief and it is also used as for its prophylactic effect it probably reduces formation of cerebrospinal fluid and lowers the brain ph uh, now uh, talking about the adverse effects of uh, acetazolamide uh, it causes the uh, metabolic acidosis this we have already discussed uh, then uh, acetazolamide causes hypokalemia now since acetazolamide causes uh, loss of potassium in the urine uh, it uh, reduces potassium in the in the blood and therefore acetazolamide causes hypokalemia another side effect of acetazolamide is the drowsiness and fatigue now apart from this since acetazolamide is a diuretic uh, because of the electrolyte shift at the at the nerve membrane acetazolamide can cause paresthesias that is abnormal sensation now since it is a sulfonamide derivative it can cause hypersensitivity reactions like rashes and fever and rarely acetazolamide causes uh, bone marrow depression now it is contraindicated in liver disease because as we have already seen uh, acetazolamide makes the urine alkaline and uh, that prevents excretion of ammonium ions leading to precipitation of hepatic coma apart from this uh, marked acidosis Uh, is seen in patients of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease uh, 
So this is in brief on the pharmacology of uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor that is acetazolamide. Now please note that the information provided in this video is meant exclusively for students from their examination point of view and kindly consult a physician for the clinical use of acetazolamide. Now if you find the video useful kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.